Nice to be with you today. Welcome to the Video CPA. I'm Michael Scott. I am your host for the Video CPA and uh, I enjoy making these videos. Uh, I enjoy uh, tax work. I'm a certified public accountant. I'm a certified management accountant. I have a master's degree in accounting and uh, I've got 45 years of experience in uh, tax preparation and uh, tax research. And so today we're talking about uh, rental property again. I'm trying to finish all the things that I need to on rental property and there's quite a bit there but we're talking about the qualified business income deduction which came about just a year or two ago and usually used on uh, business type things but it uh, does lend itself to rental property and so you'll see a lot of things on the uh, internet recommending that uh, you take a uh, uh, QBI deduction on your rental property and so we're going to discuss whether you actually should do that or not to some extent anyway but uh, let's go ahead and as you can see our uh, our affiliate disclosure and our educational disclosure that you should be familiar with if you're uh, watching these programs um, so what is the qualified business income deduction and basically what it says is that uh, you're going to get a 20 for 20 percent deduction for your business income uh, and of course your business income has to qualify and stuff and uh, now when we say that rental income is not normally characterized as business income so uh, in order for you to get the QBI deduction on rental income that rental activity is going to have to be qualified as a business and so there are some uh, fairly good stipulations on uh, whether that uh, rental property can be qualified as, as a business or not and your rental activity and part of that uh, is uh, determined on the uh, number of rentals that you have. If, um, if you, uh, you know, have one or two rentals I wouldn't even try doing this and uh, if your tax preparation guy uh, encourages us to do it, uh, I would push back a little bit. But if you got five, 10, you know, 15 rentals, uh, go ahead and go ahead and give it a try. So I uh, also, um, well, we'll get into, we'll get into the rest of it. So let's go ahead to the next slide. Um, these are the way, there's a safe harbor out there that um, is actually available for the QBI for rental property. Basically what it says is uh, you've got to keep meticulous records. You've got to keep your records on uh, what you're doing. Um, got to show how much income you're having from the property. Um, you've got to keep records of the hours that you spent and there's a 250 hour minimum on this. Um, so you've got to spend 250 hours servicing that rental property in one way or the other. Now I mentioned records, you have to keep contemporaneous records on who works on it, how many hours they spend, uh, when they do it, the dates they do it, and uh, who actually does it. So if you've got an independent contractor in there, you've got to keep track of the independent contractor. If you're doing it yourself, you've got to keep track of your, 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 own, uh, your own time. So this is not an easy uh, threshold to uh, get past, and that's why I say if you've only got one or two uh, rental properties, um, I wouldn't even mess with it. Uh, uh, in addition, uh, you have to file your uh, election to do this, and uh, it's not really an election as the IRS terms it, but you have to file a statement with your tax return saying this is what you want to do for the year. You have to give the property, the location, and um, uh, a description of the property, and uh, so uh, a few things like that and uh, then you also have to include in the statement how many properties you bought and sold uh, for the given year. So the, uh, uh, the record keeping in this is uh, fairly intensive especially if you've got quite a few uh, rental properties. But uh, so even if, uh, even if the property does not qualify under the safe harbor allowance or safe harbor requirements uh, uh, it still could possibly um, qualify as a business activity under the normal uh, uh, business uh, definition of trade or business. So uh, you need to keep that in, 
uh, mind as well. So there's really three ways that you can qualify for this deduction, and we'll get into the third in just a minute. So one is the safe harbor. Two is the regular business definition of any business, what, it, what, they, ha what they have to meet. And, and unfortunately, this is very nebulous on this uh, definition, so whether the IRS will approve this or not, who knows, you know. But, uh, but uh, the safe harbor is a little bit more well-defined, so if you can meet that, you're in good shape. But the third way to do it, um, and uh, before I go there, let's go ahead and talk about uh, some of the rental services that are included in this 250 hours. So uh, certainly advertising, if you got to make up advertising and go to the paper or whatever, uh, or however you choose to advertise. Uh, if you're collecting rent, that satisfies. Property management, uh, daily operations, and uh, you know taking care of maintenance and taking care of repair issues, uh, purchasing materials and supplies, supervision of employees and contractors, uh, reviewing tenant applications and then no negotiating contracts and stuff. And it, maybe you've just got one rental and it's got 50 units and you're okay, you know. But uh, like I say, if you've got one independent rental house or maybe two, I don't think you're going to qualify for this because 250 hours is, uh, is quite a few hours. Now there are some things that don't apply as well to, to the 250 hours and that is uh, if you're arranging financing for the property that doesn't apply. Um, if you're um, doing financial management, looking at financial statements, um, looking at operation state, operational statements and uh, doing accounting and stuff like that, that does not apply. Your travel back and forth to the property doesn't apply. Investment management, if you're investing your income uh, from this thing or doing something else that's investment related. Um, purchasing the rental property, I think uh, it doesn't mention selling the rental property, but I think that would go along with it. And then if you're, um, you're, you're managing kind of a construction project where you're um, building a new building or you're um, enlarging the old building or making improvements or something that's not going to qualify those hours spent on that will not qualify toward the 250 uh, hours all right so let's see what else we got uh, so there are some excluded activities and so one of those is uh, if you're using a personal residence for a while well some of this stuff is going on that's not going to qualify and um, <clears throat> some self rental situations um, will qualify possibly uh, and uh, so let's talk about uh, before we do that rentals on a triple net lease situation and if you're familiar with a triple triple net lease that just says that the renter is going to have to pay the insurance and the taxes and uh, uh, the upkeep of the uh, uh, the building and so that uh, the in that case the uh, uh, the, the renter uh, doesn't have a lot of uh, doesn't have a lot of responsibility for the place because the um, rentee is taking care of all of it. So, uh, so you don't want if you got a triple triple let let triple net lease, you're not going to qualify as uh, for uh, this activity as a business anyway. All right, let's go and talk about the uh, self rental situations. If you've got a self rental situation and your business is a um, a business other than a service-oriented business, uh, and you know you've bought a building and you're running it to your business, that's going to qualify as a QBI type deduction. So you'll you'll fall under that. So, for example, if you've got a plumbing business and you've got the shop uh, in maybe in a limited partnership or a um, uh, LLC or a S corp. And you're running it to your plumbing business it's going to qualify now if you've got an accounting business or a law practice and you're doing the same thing with your building and uh, running it to your um, law practice or accounting practice well then you've got a few more problems because then uh, the income is not going to qualify depending on how much that uh, uh, the, the guy makes. I mean, if you uh, if you make a certain amount of money, you're only going to partially qualify. If you make too much money, you're not going to qualify at all on those. So, much harder to qualify a uh, what's called an SSTB, which is a service business uh, for accountants, health professionals, that type of thing. So, um, 
those are harder to qualify, but um, if you've got any other type of business, uh, it's a much easier way. So that's the third way to qualify. So we talked about three ways. One was just under the general business definitions. The other was under the safe harbor. And then we've got uh, this one under uh, a self-rental type situation with a, uh, a business that is other than an SSTB. And uh, in some cases, an SSTB will even uh, qualify. All right, <clears throat> that's fast, and uh, this is not easy stuff, but for the most part, let me just talk about this for a few minutes, okay? I, like I say, there are a lot of people out on the web encouraging this, and I think if you've got, a, you know, four or five or more properties, maybe you try this. Um, if uh, you've got one property or two, I, I would not try it. And one of the drawbacks of being characterized as a business is uh, uh, if you make money, you've got self-employment income. Now, the self-employment rate is 15.3%, so if you're getting a 20% uh, deduction, um, you know, it's really not that big a deduction if you're paying self-employment on it. So uh, uh, that needs to be kept in mind. Um, and, uh, you know, the record keeping needs to be kept in mind and the um, um, opportunity, you know, just the authorization for you to do this. If you're ever audited, you might lose your deductions. So, but so make sure that, uh, you know, um, you don't have to be a real estate professional, uh, but um, it certainly helps. And uh, so the number of uh, properties uh, that you have is going to make a big difference here. And also your outside work, if you're retired and this is all you do, that might um, help qualify. But uh, for the most part, uh, just a few rentals, I would not even uh, attempt it. Certainly if you've got a Schedule C or a business, uh, some other kind of business, I would I would do it. So there are some, there are some areas there and the, the easiest area to qualify under is the self-rental uh, with a business that is other than a service-oriented business. So thank you for watching. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and uh, subscribe. And uh, uh, one thing you ought to do if you want more information on these subjects and uh, other subjects in tax is go out to the Video CPA Tax Preparation School. We've got right now, we're in a beta format. We've got those classes out there for free. Uh, they're not gonna be free for much longer. There's only six classes out there. We're producing about a class per week. By the end of the year, we expect to have maybe 30 classes out there. And, uh, but uh, we're going to start charging for those classes, you know, pretty quick. So www.thevideocpa.com. And like I say, if you haven't described, subscribed, just hit the emblem in the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much.